Welcome to the Untrapped Podcast, where we're motivated and inspired about success, small business, and personal development. And now, Keith Kalfas. What's up? Thanks. What's up, guys? Thank you. How you doing? What's up? I'm Keith Kelfis, and I am a landscaper. My business is literally, what, 15 miles from here south. Uh, it started in 2011 with an eviction notice on my door and a brand new wife. I went out and hustled 100 hours a week and killed myself to get it off the ground. And basically, within six weeks of getting a business off the ground, I was like, wait a second, I was stuck in a dead-end job for all these years. So I had this epiphany, I wanna go on YouTube and help other people do the same thing that I did. And with this complete obsession with video marketing, internet marketing, and social media marketing, was able to build a landscaping business and a YouTube channel at the same time. And they were both kind of like not going where they could be because the saying, if you chase two rabbits, both will escape. <laughs> so, but I'm just a normal dude. I'm not even in your industry. I have a lot of respect for you guys already just pulling up at the parking lot and seeing all this. And I know what it's like to hustle and chase your dreams and build a business and feed a family and then go up and above and beyond. I've known Marvin for since like 2014 and he did run across the parking lot. I mean, I ran across the parking lot to him because he was like any nobody else. And I was like, bro, I have to talk to you just one more time. It was like, he looked at me stone cold. It was like one of those moments of truth. He's like, I just want to be the best human I can possibly be. And when he said that, it's like, it almost put tears in my eyes. Cause it was like, he didn't just mean in his business. He meant like everything. It was like that those, those moments where he like some magnifying glass on your soul and you feel this responsibility and you're in touch with your mortality and stuff like that. And then I've watched him just take off and do amazing things. But anyways, I want to talk about and also get your feedback as well. Cause I don't know you guys yet. Um, there's a couple different things I can talk about. The social media marketing aspect, we've got about 80 million views online and we built two businesses at once. I just have a small landscape business, three employees, because I fell in love with this media business that's gone on like a side hustle online, mostly automated, selling online courses, eBooks, programs, and doing public talks and stuff like this. And it's like these automated sources of income but then at the same time, I'm learning, you can use the same stuff and cross pollinate as being a contractor to get these views online that have customers calling you saying, like, I saw your video and I liked it. It made perfect sense. And it positioned me or anybody to where the customer is calling, they want a quote and they're ready to buy because they feel like they know you, like you and trust you. Does anybody here uh, take pictures and videos of their job sites and have a Facebook? Yeah, anybody, a YouTube channel? Yeah, nice. Oh, and then um, does anybody here marketing their business consistently like before and after pictures and Facebook and Instagram and yeah? And are you getting good leads from it? Is it working? I have 20,000 that went viral. You have what? I got 20,000 followers on Insta for Asphalt Driveway and then I went viral with a, with a video that I always want to do with 9 million and I've turned it into one drive. So yeah. I, I'm very interested with the, the search engine optimization and SEO marketing and Google SERPs, which is search engine ranking page. If you take those viral videos and you built, you built them and bake them into a blog on your website. And here's the caveat to all of this. I have something called a marketing progression pyramid that I've, I'm learning and have figured out the hard way. You don't have to do a lot of this stuff yourself. If you take that stuff and you build it into a search engine optimized blog within your website, that's all baked in well, well written, like 15 to 2,500 word blog articles that are tagged to your local business and city and zip code and pulling in so social proof with positive reviews from customers, you'll show up on the Google three pack, which is organic uh, without even spending any money on ads. So you take those viral videos and you take all that stuff and it's called uh, authority domain sites, uh, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, um, Pinterest, LinkedIn. When I say domain authority site, these are sites that have billions and billions of views. So Google indexes them with the crawlers. And then out of, you know, the literally hundreds of millions of sites on the internet, it'll put them 
and high ranking. So when you link all your business information inside of those, and then you pull that back to your website like an interconnecting spider web, and you do it consistently on a drip feed basis, then it pushes you up the, the ranking charts because you're put, putting out consistent content that is relative to your market and your marketplace and to the, the avatar, which is your customer. And then you'll start showing up organically. And then, so does anybody have any interest? Um, there's, there's two different things I'm split on wanting to talk about here. I'll go right into this. When you're trying to run your business and do everything, manage employees, jobs, scheduling, payroll, something's messed up on a job site, you gotta run back, you're up at midnight, you know, running payroll, now the workers comp has an audit, it's non-stop. I, I mean, this is my, my life. I'm like, how in the hell am I gonna find time to do this marketing? Like, oh shit, I forgot to take the before and after picture. I just didn't have time. You can hire virtual assistants on a site called upwork.com that will literally help you. They love doing this and they'll do all this stuff for you on autopilot. We have eight to 12 pieces of content going out per day, every single day, hundreds of pieces of content per month. I have 17 virtual assistants now and built an entire media business and pay them anywhere. If you are looking for the greatest software ever to run your business on, go to getjobber.com forward slash Keith. You can create proposals, invoices, collect payments, and track your entire business directly on the Jobber smartphone app. If you want to get a totally free trial of Jobber right now, open your browser, type in getjobber.com forward slash Keith. And after the trial, if you decide to sign up with Keith's link, you'll automatically get 20% off your first six months. So what are you waiting for? Go to getjobber.com forward slash Keith. Between like 15 to $125 an hour, depending on what it is, but on an average about 20 bucks an hour. So my only job and my business is to take the before and after picture, take videos, vlogs, and I just upload that stuff to Dropbox and I don't do anything else. My video editor takes the video, makes makes the video my virtual assistant who and i'll show you how to do all this stuff will take that content and chop it up and share it on instagram TikTok, facebook and reels and stories and all that stuff and then everything that i say if i have a video where i'm talking for seven minutes straight about a specific topic my podcast producer will take that and extract the audio put an intro and an outro and uh, bumpers and, and pump that out to 17 different podcast platforms we use ai for well-written show notes and then my blog article writer happens to be in uh, Virginia. He'll take that and then he'll write a 2,500 word blog article and then put the podcast and the video and the shorts, all that, put that on my blog. And then I pay him extra and he'll write a well-written email and then he'll pump that out to our email list of 15,000 people. And then it all has calls to action that go back to everything. And then my Pinterest virtual assistant, like we'll take that and post the shit all over Pinterest. And so we have this whole marketing media machine happening completely on autopilot. And it's just a bunch of virtual assistants in the Philippines who I trust, <laughs> you're gonna kiss a lot of frogs, that can help you um, do all this shit. And you're literally just running your business, yet there's this like thing happening in the background and people will be like, how the fuck are you doing this? And you'll be like, I'm not doing it. There's a book that I read by Dan Ken, uh, I'm sorry, Dan Sullivan, the strategic coach, and he's also, uh, if anybody here heard of Gino Wickman, Traction, Get a Grip, and Rocket Fuel, read these books on audible.com. This book called Who Not How changed my life because I kept saying, how do I do this? How do I do this? How do I do this? So I'm like eating dinner with my wife and then literally trying to do marketing on the toilet, in and out of the shower, in the basement after she goes to sleep. I was up till 2.30 o'clock in the, this morning doing marketing, like, but, um, because we just did a, like a big launch yesterday, a Cyber Monday thing, and we're generating sales online. But you can go on a site called upwork.com and scour through virtual assistants and just start interviewing these people. And what I do is I'll hire three for the same project and I'll quickly, quickly let go of the two that don't work. If I need um, like anything, there's tens of thousands, probably, I don't know how many say tens of thousands of people all over the world that are obsessed with, happy, and want to do exactly what you need help with. A virtual bookkeeper, someone to do your marketing, obviously an accountant and all that stuff, somebody to run payroll. And, and we've gone completely 
like with the pandemic and everything, people are really online and work from home. So you can have, aside from your core team that you run your business with, because you need boots on the ground banging out the actual jobs, everything else can be completely virtual. And so what we do is we have weekly pulse meetings with the virtual assistants, and we just hop on Zoom once a week at Fridays at two o'clock for an hour or two. And here's the thing that changed everything. So <laughs> early I called this thing called the marketing progression pyramid. Like, first of all, you have pain and suffering and you know you have a problem, but you don't know how to fix it. You wanna grow your business, you wanna market it, you wanna get tons of leads coming in so you can skip, uh, scoop the cream off the top and only take on the highest paying, most qualified jobs and just like not have to say yes to the shit that you, you know what I'm saying, don't want to. Well, the next step in this marketing progression pyramid is like, you know you have a problem and you're, work, you're actively working on solving it, but you're wearing all the hats and pulling your hair out because you're only one person and that's how you end up in burnout because you're wearing all the hats. The next step of this pyramid is where you have people that you've hired that are helping you in the field, in the office. You've got an office manager, you've got a secretary. Like we use a Jill's office virtual assistants. They answer the phone for us and they book the jobs automatically online and schedule it with Jobber. And then they do everything. They sell the job and we literally can just show up and do the work. Uh, they're virtual receptionists and they're right here in the United States in Utah. But you're still wearing all the hats and pulling your hair out and it's taking you away from taking Sundays off taking Saturdays off, hanging out with your family, being fully present where you can just like leave your phone in your truck for like a whole day if you wanted because it's all handled. The final step in this marketing progression pyramid that finally, I saw this a couple years ago and I was like, but how, how is the wrong question? How in the F am I gonna do this? And it seemed impossible to me because you hear about these people that have these multi-million dollar businesses and they're like, I hired a CFO or a CEO and I pay him 110 grand a year. Well, um, I just did an interview with a friend named Dan Plata, him and his partners own like 15 different uh, businesses on my podcast. And he says like, when you get to the point where you're making 100,000 in personal income in your business between payroll and distributions, I started crying laughing because when you go to hire that key person, now you have to pay them a major chunk and now all your personal income goes away and you're stuck in cash flow purgatory because now you have to keep growing the business. So you're like running with your hair on fire while the pavement's falling behind you, or you can just stay stuck and be in first gear pedaling your ass off. In order to get the second, third, and fourth gear, you have to pay the who's. So he, he said he, he was like walks in the kitchen to his wife and making a hundred grand a year of personal income off this, you know, six or $700,000 business. She's like, wow, he goes, but it's all going away. And she's like, what? He's like, yeah, I'm hiring uh, an operations manager to manage all the employees in the field to get all the shit done so I can focus on running admin and marketing and change my hats. And when he said it's all going away, I was just like crying laughing on the podcast because that's something you should never tell your wife, like it's all going away. But you know, that it was so funny. And what he was talking about is when you understand this stuff, you expect it and you anticipate it and you plan for it in advance. It's when you don't know when the shit happens to you and now your business is haywire because you don't have any minimum viable systems or um, methods, fr simple frameworks that when it happens and it blindsides you that you're stressed out and end up, you know, by the time winter comes, you're, dude, I've been so depressed in the winter with bags under my eyes and I look and my hair has gone gray and shit and I'm, I wake up in the morning, I'm like, what the fuck, like go into depression. So it's like summer, high, winter depression. It's like, how do we even that shit out? And so for me, it was the who's, not the how's. Um, so the final step in the marketing progression pyramid at the top of the list is... So I'm really excited because if you want to learn how to market your business with video, you could do so much with your smartphone. We got to like 400,000 views a month with my smartphone. I hit 20,000 subscribers on YouTube. And even though I was making uh, all types of videos, mostly they were landscaping videos and there was customers, you know, reaching out saying that they saw my videos and they wanted to hire us. And then it just, it just really worked. So whether you're trying to market your actual business to get more leads or you want to grow your own personal brand, and get into you know video marketing and pff, you can do all this with your smartphone
So I created a free download. It's a, it's a 12 page guide all about how to use your smartphone. And there's some unique mechanisms in there that really can open your eyes to all you need is your smartphone. So go to keithkelfis.com slash smartphone and you can download the free guide right now. keithkelfis.com slash smartphone. See you there. It's an integrator. There's the visionary integrator relationship. You now, if that's what you want to do, become the visionary of your business. And then you hire the integrator and it could be just a kick-ass office manager that, that does all that stuff for you. So my integrator now, I can't tell you her name, but she's in Texas. She's a, dude, she's a fucking rock star. I wish she would have come into my life five years ago, but I wasn't ready. And, um, dude, I, I'm like literally sending this lady gourmet brownies and gift cards to Outback Steakhouse. I could cry for how thankful I am because now in my business, everything that I have a vision, she's like, hold up, let's put that on our CRM. It's called monday.com where all of the ideas and business marketing ideas and everything we have is completely categorized and organized to exactly what needs to be done. And it's all time-based with triggers. So if we have a new idea that comes in, it's like, wait, we're working on this project. You sure you want to do this? All right, we'll set that up for March. So now we have a marketing content calendar with themes that we're putting together and I've hired a consultant. So when I'm on the weekly pulse call with my virtual assistants and paying a consultant to guide us along, here's what it is. I have the integrator on the Zoom calls with us, paying attention to everything and she's taking notes and AI is recording it and creating show notes. So that way when we get off the Zoom call, you get, you, go, you get sucked right back into your business and you can't even fucking implement, implement anything that you just learned. And you're like, what the fuck? I, I learned you. So you get excited, then you get let down. When you have the integrators there with you and you're present and you're the visionary, you say, all right, all right, now go do it. And then they do the shit and they're fucking doing it all. And I'm literally like, we're, we, I've created this thing. Uh, we, we have a, a book. It's the operations manual for my landscape business. And it's getting thicker and thicker and thicker. This is a dream come true. And I'm flipping through these beautiful pages of our four steps to training employees. The 16 documents any employee must sign before we can cut them a check, background check, drug screen, social media release form, non-disclosure agreement, all that stuff. Um, our budgets, everything, on and on and on. I'm like, how? And I show this to my, my I'm like crazy in love with my wife and I, <laughs> Cause we, we were like poor shit in a one bedroom apartment. And I couldn't fucking figure it out. And I was really depressed and to watch where we're at now is a dream come true. And I pulled her into my studio. I'm like, you have to see this. We have these beautiful branded company manual with all these things happening. And she's like, Oh my God, this is beautiful. This is amazing. This is gorgeous. And I'm like, so proud of it. And I almost feel weird. Like I, like I, cause I didn't do any of the shit. I know, everything line by line. I'm on the phone with the lawyer. I'm asking questions and making sure everything is super, super legit. Like if something is, if a T's not crossed and an I's not dotted, like I'm getting up at three o'clock in the morning and praying and shit and calling up my assistant. And I'm like, I have to make sure because if I'm sorry, I'm going too deep with that, but integrity is everything. And so basically you can hire people to do all the shit for you. And you can do it through virtual assistants on a site called upwork.com. Um, if it's something very critical, make sure possibly they're in the United States and a lot of people can be overseas. Like I said, you're going to kiss a lot of frogs. I've been through like 65 virtual assistants. I have a video editor right now in Serbia who's amazing, but he's totally MIA for the past eight weeks. I've got overdue projects. We've got 17 videos already filmed, ready to be edited, and he's gone. I have three more video editors. One is in Russia, but since the sanctions, I just don't know if I can hire him anymore. Um, I have... So multiple video editors and people on board doing stuff. And the next step is make sure that all these virtual assistants are all cohesively in understanding with your brand and everything that you do. So everything they do looks uh, the consistent, has consistent textures, fonts, tones, the messaging is correct. The, we have something called a brand style guide. So anybody, if we have a graphic designer do anything, everything looks exactly the same and looks branded. So therefore the messaging that's coming out on the internet and on social media, they immediately know that it's my stuff. So think about that in your business. Am I going too far here? Is this resonating? You can do like all this stuff. And the next question by Tim Ferriss, the author of the four hour work week, 
he has this free guide. It's like the 17 questions you have to ask yourself. And my favorite one is what would this look like if it were easy? So I would be like, this is so hard. And I'd get overwhelmed because I have a lot of anxiety sometimes. I say, wait a second, this shit is easy. So um, build it into your marketing. You don't have to have a fancy camera. You can use your phone. Start taking the footage of the job sites uh, and before and after pictures. Here's a, an amazing thing I learned. On your iPhone or your Android, you can press like the plus button in the gallery and create albums. I create an album for every different customer's last name or the name of the project. And then all the videos and pictures go into that project. I got one obviously for family and my dogs and Christmases, but with the business stuff, it's all hyper organized. And then I have that all matching inside of Dropbox Every single thing that has to do with the business, whether it's uh, uh, employees or payroll or taxes or insurance or anything social media, it's all out of my head and in the cloud so my virtual assistants can access it. Looking to maximize your production in the field? Ballard Products has over 300 products that can help you get the most out of your efforts every day. Ballard Products. Whether you are looking to get a better cut, keep your gear on your machine, keep your expensive equipment clean and safe, or just get the most out of your machines, Ballard has you covered. Ballard Products. Jump onto our easy-to-use updated website at ballard-inc.com to get your gear ordered today. Keep, keep grinding, grinding. Stay, stay safe, safe, and have a great season. Ballard. Make sure to use the code KEITH10 to save 10% on our full line of gear. That's KEITH10. And, um... So everything that comes in in real time is being uploaded to the cloud with tags. So the virtual assistants can go right in and grab what they need and they don't have to keep bugging me. So if you're trying to scroll through your phone, like, fuck, where was that one picture? It do, it's right where it's supposed to be because you're doing it in real time. So <laughs> um, I'm, I get really excited when I meet people at events like this and I see them in a year or two. And it'll be like something like Marvin. He's like, bro, we're doing it. We've automated this part of the business. It made me free. I started that podcast I've always dreamed of. And now it's working and we're traveling. And it's like your, your, your dreams and what you want to do is literally so close. Six to 12 months, you can be doing some epic shit that you always dream, whether it's in your business or on anything. Because a lot of people have multiple businesses now and multiple, like you might have your day business and you have an internet side hustle on Amazon or you're doing some social media stuff and people love multiple streams of income and cryptocurrency and stocks and all that shit. It's like, but if you can just take a couple of those hats or at least one of those hats off in your day business and give it to someone else, um, it'll free you up to do all that shit. So I think that's enough. Is there any questions Did I bore you to death? <laughs> Am I talking too fast? Good stuff. Good stuff. Those are, I, I have resources too, yeah. Yeah, uh, I was just gonna say that. The resources that you just mentioned, where can people find more information on that? Like uh, the books you've written, how to find, how to find you and, and whatnot online, they do have those. Yeah, I think that uh, my books would be boring to you guys. I just published my fourth book called 17 Ways to Market a Landscaping Business. And that'll be out like in a couple of months. We're recording the audiobook right now on audible.com. We have like seven online courses. We have all this, but it's all about like landscaping, window cleaning, and marketing. We have a program called the Business Marketing Blueprint. It's keithkelfus.com slash BMB. But I want to tell you the books that I've read that have made me have these epiphanies. It's Dan Sullivan, the book called Who Not How on audible.com. So throw in headphones and listen to that while you're working. And then the other books are by Gino Wickman is Traction, Get a Grip, and Rocket Fuel. These hyper-specific pieces of information will like wake you up and can create huge changes. Because when, when you change the way you see things, the things you see literally change. So that's it. Any questions? Yeah, just to follow up, you said you've gone through 65 virtual assistants and you've got kind of like four you're working through. Collectively? Yeah, now we have like 17. There's a core group of like seven or nine. It's because some of them are like all the time. Some of them are sometimes. Some of them are part time. Some. I dig into, I guess, was, is it kind of just consistently I've had like stripping of the bird where people go in my Or was it at the beginning like it was really hard to find that core group that's kind of stuck through? Or I know that's been a lot, a lot of times that's an issue with finding virtual assistants is, yeah, they just they go AWOL or they can't get the brand message right or different things like that. So I didn't know how long it took you to find those couple to kind of. Yes. Rest off of. 
2016, there's this internet marketer guy named Ty Lopez. He'd have his Lamborghinis in his garage and shit. And he went mega viral. And people were questioning him, but then he put out this course, like it was a social media marketing uh, business training thing. And I bought it and I was watching it. And there was this guy in there named, I think it was Joe Soto. He, he had like a multi-million dollar internet marketing agency where he did stuff for businesses like ours. And then he talked about hiring virtual assistants. And in one moment, I had this, what we call an epiphany bridge where I was like, wait a second. I immediately took Upwork and I opened it up and I started, oh my God, this has been here this whole time. So I just, I was so scared to hire somebody because I was afraid of making a mistake. And then I finally, as I'm like, this pain isn't going to stop unless I just take a chance. And then the first person I hired totally sucked. And then I was trying to have my wife help me. Then I'm trying to have my cousin, Nathan, this kid's like 18. I'm like, dude, I'll pay you 14 bucks an hour. And then he didn't know what he was doing. So I, instead of trying to find the, um, instead of trying to train somebody to do it, you just find somebody who's already good at that specific thing, but be willing to like hire fast and fire fast. Like I said, I'll hire three people for the same task and then I'll get rid of the other two that don't work. And I'm super upfront and clear. And I noticed that when you're incredibly confident and you've like stepped over the line and you are committed to this thing, other people pick up on it and then they want to jump onto your mission. Just like almost like an employee, if you hire them and you, you don't seem too committed about your own business and your truck's all dirty, they're like, well, I don't know what this, but if, you're, if your shit's clean and you've got a mission and a vision, the employees, because they're like your internal customers. So now when I interview virtual assistants, I'm so serious that I'll keep them on a Zoom call for an hour and I'll run them through different tests and I'll almost cajole them in a point to ask them questions that might irritate them to see if they have anger issues. Cause, and cause I mean, these people, some of them, you're giving them the keys to the kingdom. Are you up front with them about the, like the trying three out for the same task? You're like, Hey, you gotta prove your shit or you kind of. So what is your unique superpower? Your unique thing that makes you, you like, what is it about your personality that uh, people like, well, here's what I'm saying. You can market your business on social media. You don't absolutely have to even show your face, but if you can get comfortable with that and just being yourself, be yourself with the volume turned all the way up, you can crush it with marketing your business on social media. So I created this guide and it's a free PDF download. We're giving it away. It's keithkelfus.com slash superpower. Open your browser and type that in and get the free guide. This is like 15 pages. Like we really went through and we analyzed step by step. What can you do to narrow and define your niche? Like how to specifically make it work. Just go to keithkalfas.com slash superpower, download the free guide and I'll see you there. No, a couple have found out and cause they had access to like the same Google drive folder and I could feel it was a little funny, but I do, I like, I don't know if I'll do that going forward, but I've got a business to run and we've got deadlines and stuff going on. And so it just like kind of is what it is. And this is not nice to say, and I'm wrong just because they're 5,000 miles away or something. It should be no different. So I think moving forward, I will be more upfront and say, Hey, we, we have, we're, we'll have, we're hiring multiple positions and we're just going to pick the one that resonates the most. And, but, I mean, this has been virtual assistants who have outright ripped us off and, you know, lied about something. That's why I like upwork.com because everything's under contract and they're clocking everything in and out. Like my executive assistant, she, we've uh, retained her just exclusively, but she uses a program called Clockify and she clocks everything that she does. When we're talking on the phone on Zoom calls, it doesn't matter what it is. She's clocking it all and then she gives me a report specifically of where every minute was spent. So I know exactly where every dollar is going. So when I hire a virtual assistant, I let assistant, I let them know, I say, at the end of every single session that you work for me on your own hours, unless there's like urgent deadline, I want you to, and I'll pay you to take the last five minutes and just, even if it's on a Google doc, go and tally up what you did in a couple links with the amount of time, real simple, charge me for that, and then send it with your invoice so I know where the heck my money's going. And if they ever stop doing that and fall off, I'm, hey, hey, where's that thing? Where's that thing? Because if they can't follow simple directions, then how are they going to follow through when the going gets tough? So 
I just set the expectations just like an employee. Like employees in my landscape business, I'm like, you can't even work for us unless, like I'm not gonna put the camera in your face, but we shoot videos every day. Unless you're comfortable with being on camera, you can take a drug test, pass a background screen. And so <laughs> they're like sitting here signing all this shit. I'm like, dude, I'm not gonna like come after you or anything. I just, I gotta protect my business and my ass. And But we're gonna crush it. We're gonna kill it. I'm excited. And so it's like, same exact thing. Did that answer it? Yeah. Just jump in and do it. You might go through three or four virtual assistants and then you'll find one that'll stick with you and you'll be like, oh my God, three years has gone by and this person is doing tremendous things in my business and I couldn't imagine my business without them. And the next thing is don't think that each virtual assistant is gonna be the savior of your business. Like, oh my God, because you get excited. Be like, I found this person because one thing can happen and now they're MIA. I have a virtual assistant in the, uh, in the Philippines who will literally just dis disappear for like six weeks straight. And I'm like, oh my God, what's going on? So now she's gone from my main assistant to my secondary assistant because she's so good at what she does. And now I have a main assistant who's not as good, but is reliable and dependable. And so now that's with our podcast production. So I was like, fuck it, I'll just do two shows a week. And sometimes when this one, so it's like somebody will be like, well, you should fire that person. I'm like, oh, I'm trying to, it's, all, it's like a math game, you know? But yeah, you can have multiple people and the, and the whole, there's like a, they say you can get virtual assistants for $4 an hour. Dude, I don't, I, I want to pay them like so well, like in Asia, I forgot. And don't quote me if I might be wrong. Like in December, it's like there, it's like a whole holiday. There's some tradition where you pay them what they would have made the entire month. So I haven't done that and I do plan on doing that. But I'm like giving them bonuses like all the time. I'll give them all a hundred dollar bonus. I make a quick video with uh, Loom on my webcam and I, I will personally thank every, each and every single one of them. If they're local, I'll send them gourmet brownies and, and um, let them know that I genuinely care about them. And I say, thank you for being on my team. I'm so thankful. And, and that, that reciprocity works amazing and they stick. So I have become my VAs and they're as freelancers I'm their favorite client. And now they're, they, they're so much more loyal to me because we're building a team, we're going somewhere. Yeah. So, any other questions? Come on, something. Good. All right. You sure? All right. Well, What's up? <laughs> I'm sorry. Right. I'm begging for a question. Yeah. Uh, so, what would you recommend like a first hire to be like if, if I had no personal assistant? Um, what would be the, the first step in getting one? Like, what, what would I let go first? What would you what? Like what? What task would you recommend letting go first? Oh, the first task, if you, the first virtual assistant you should hire, I think, is actually a bookkeeper to do to log onto your QuickBooks and your bank accounts, a trusted bookkeeper, so they can only see transactional data and then start doing all your books for you and giving you monthly uh, profit and loss statements and balance sheets when you need it. So you know exactly what your books are. And so our bookkeeper is like 365 a month. We have two, one bookkeeper, two businesses. So it's like 500 bucks a month. And like our books are perfect now. So, so that would be like in conjunction with like an in-house controller or something like that. You have them like take a second look and reconcile and stuff like that. I don't know the answer to that. But if you have somebody in house, that's even better, I would say. Okay. But we hire an agency or uh, it's best damn bookkeeping by Dan Plata. Okay. So, yeah. All right, everybody. Thanks, yeah. Keith. Really, really Thank you. It, Absolutely. Keith, you stick around a little bit. Yeah. All right. So if you have questions or you'd like to get uh, Keith one on one for a minute, we'll be around you for a little bit. Hey, I hope you liked the show. And if you like the Untrapped podcast and you get value from it, can you please take a minute and go over to Spotify and leave it a well-worded positive five-star review. It helps boost the rankings on Spotify so the show can get to more people. Therefore, this, these messages can get out to more people and inspire more people so then they can go out and start their small businesses and crush it and get to the next level. It's a huge deal. All right, I'll see you in the next show.